One of the skills that has helped me tremendously over the years is the ability to transpose a song from one key to another. Hey, I'm Thomas Michaud from Real Guitar Success. When I first started out, the way I used to do that is I'd take a song on a sheet of paper with the chords, and I would take the first chord and count up to the key that I wanted to change to. So for example, if I'm in the key of D, I count up one note to E, cross off the chord and rewrite it. Not so bad when you're going up one or maybe even two steps, but when you start going three, four or five steps, it was easy to get confused. And I often made a mess out of it and had to do it several times till I got it right. I also made some very messy paper in the process, but all in all, it was good practice. I have found an easier way and I'm gonna share it with you. I've created what I call a key change chord chart could be easily called a transposition chart. You can use that easily to just find your place on the chart where you're at and where you want to go to and figure out the chords. I still would recommend crossing off and writing it on the sheet so you remember and you don't have to look at the chart and keep going back to the sheet of music. But the more you do it, the easier it gets. Now you're gonna love this. I'm gonna show you how to use the key change chord chart. I'm gonna give you a download link so you can get your own copy. And I'm gonna show you some practical examples of how I would go about changing keys. Let's head over to a bigger version of that chart and I'll show you how it works. Okay, let me start by explaining how the chart works. This will be kind of a quick review type explanation. I do have another video where I go into more detail. On the far left hand side is a list of all the different keys. Then within each row, you'll see a list of the chords in that key. At the top, I've numbered them with Roman numerals, one through seven. That indicates that the chord is built off of that scale degree. In other words, in the key of A, the one chord is A, the two chord is B minor, the three chord is C sharp minor. I'm following that top row there, just underneath the Roman numerals. To use this for transposition, you just find the key that you're in, find the chord that you're using, and then find the key you want to go to and find the new chord. For example, I'm going to do something in the key of G. Let's use a simple song, Blowing in the Wind by Bob Dylan. The three chords that I'll need are G, C, and D. In the key of G, we're using the one chord, the four chord, the C, and the five chord, the D. So we've got a one, four, five. How many roads must a man walk down before you can park in a man? So I'd like to transpose this lower. That's pretty high for my voice. I could go down from G to F. I already know right off though, F is a key I, I genuinely stay away from on the guitar. It has that B flat for the four chord and I don't want to go there unless I absolutely have to. Let's go down a little farther, E. Hmm, that sounds like it could work, but I think I want to go even a little bit lower. That was really high for my voice. Let's try the key of D. So now I'm going to find the key of D and follow along. The one chord will be D. The four chord, which was C, is now G. And the five chord is an A. Now what I would actually do is I'd take the sheet music and I'd cross off the G chord that I'm using and substitute next to it, I'd write the D chord. And I'd go and find the next C chord and I'd cross that, I'd just put a simple line through it. And then I'd write the next chord, which is gonna be G. And when I came to the D chord in the original, I'd put a line through it and make an A next to it. I, it makes it easier to remember. Over time, you might remember this more easily, especially with simple three chord songs. But in the beginning, this is a great practice. So now we've got blowing in the wind in the key of D. How many roads must a man walk down? That's much better, yeah. Um, that actually works fine for me, but let's say it was still a little bit high. I could go down another key. Let's go down to the key of C quickly. Uh, take from D to C. When it's next to each other, it's even a little easier. I'll change that D chord to a C, right? I'm in the key of C. And then I'll go and find the four chord. I'm looking at the Roman numerals for four. A F and a G, ooh, F, okay. Well, I can handle that, it's a bar chord, but if you're not into that, you can just find a key that doesn't use a bar chord. C, F, and G and so on. You could go to any key. 
Now here's a little dip that actually could be a big benefit in the long run. Sometimes when I'm transposing going down, I'll avoid a key that has maybe a bar chord and go a little lower, but then I'll put a capo on it and bring it back up. So for an example here, if I was playing in the key of D, and let's say that was actually a little low for my voice, I might put the capo on there and just raise it up and play the same D chords, which were easy to play. And I've solved the problem without having to go to a key with bar chords. This chart is a great way to learn your keys and it's also going to help you to be able to change keys. If I were you, and I didn't have this when I was starting out, I would print this out, put it up on the wall and look at it often. Let's try this with a slightly more complex song. I'll use for an example the chorus to Country Roads by John Denver. We're going to do this in the key of G. So the one chord will be a G, then we'll use a five chord, then to a six chord, that's the E minor, and then a C chord. That happens to be a common chord progression. The one, five, six, four. Also called the hit maker. It's been used in so many pop songs. Country road, take me home to the place I belong. So on. Now, just for practice, let's try going up a key. So now we're going to go from G. There's no H, right? So we start over A. A would be actually a step higher. For the one chord, we'll use the A. We'll need a five chord. That's E in the key of A. Now the six chord is F sharp minor. Bar chord for me. You could use a partial bar, but either way, a substantial chord. And then to D, which is the four chord. Country road. Okay. Of course, I can always go down a key also. Let's see, if we're in G, I might want to try the key of D or C. Let's do C just for practice. C, five chord, G, six chord, A minor, and then F. I'm not going to try and sing it. I don't know if that'll work for my voice, but I wanted to show you an example of what you can do. One little trick that I'll mention here is sometimes if you want to avoid certain chords like bar chords, you can lower it until you get to a key without the bar chord, but maybe it's a little low for your voice, then put a capo on and raise it back up. That way you can avoid using the bar chord. One more example, even more chords. We'll use the verse from I Can't Help Falling in Love with You, Elvis Presley. We'll start off with a one chord, a C chord, to an E minor, it's a three chord, three minor, and then the six chord, A minor. Off to the four chord, back to the one, and end on the five chord. So that's all the chords that we're gonna need for the verse. Let's do that much. We'll start off with the one chord that's from C up to D. Take a look at the chart. We're off to the three chord. We'll need, in place of the E minor, an F sharp minor. Now, one of the things I can easily do here is I can kind of see the chord and I can easily count up from C to D. When you start making bigger leaps, it's more difficult. But in my mind, I can go from C to D. From E minor, F sharp minor. Now, I happen to know the keys and I know F is going to be F sharp. But if you don't, look at the chart. And then we need a six chord, B minor. Now to the four chord in the key of D, that's going to be a G. Back to the one chord and end with a five chord. So to review, we've got D in place of C, F sharp minor in place of the E minor, and E minor in place of the A minor. Then we go to the four chord, the G in place of the F, back to D in place of the C, and then A in place of the G. Our new key sounds like this. Wise men say only Now you can use this same process for songs that are in a minor key, and I've included a whole section of minor keys. There's one caveat you should know about. On this chart, all the five chords are minor in minor keys. But in reality, it's common practice, not always, but common practice often to change that to a major. You're kind of borrowing from a major key because the changing that E minor in the key of A minor to a E major makes it stronger. Listen for a minute. Go A minor to E minor, 
and back to A minor, and that's the key. Listen, when I change to the E, it has a little more energy going back to the one chord, especially when you add the four chord. That's what I just did. I went to the D minor, to the E chord. So we're gonna use the, I call a Spanish progression. That's basically the key of A minor, the A to the seven chord, from one to seven, to six, and to the five chord, which should be E minor, but I'm gonna change it to E major. So the progression's this, A minor, G, F, and E. One, seven, six, five. Let's change that to the key of E minor. So we're going for the seven chord, that's a D. Take a look, can you see it? <laughs> to the six chord, C, and now to the five chord. Did you notice what I did? B, not only B, but I changed it to B7. Partly because it's easier than playing a B bar chord, but it also sounds good to me. The seventh chord really has a strong sense of going back to that E minor. Now in common practice, what I would often do is take the sheet out and just cross off the chords and write it. But over time, when you do that, you'll find that you start remembering especially simpler progressions at the top of your head. You'll remember that a C, F, G automatically goes to D, G, A. And that one's the easy one, a three chord progression. But as you start practicing more complex progressions, it gets to be easier and easier. Two ways to practice this. One is just pull out songs, Go to the chart, cross off the chords, and change the key. You might want to try playing it, make sure it sounds good. I've made mistakes more than once myself, not really looking accurately at the chart or not counting properly. I, I used to try without the chart, I used to try and count up the chords or count down each of the chords. So I'd say I'd go up four and I'd miss something. It'd, it'd be a sharp instead of a natural. A second good way to practice it is to learn common chord progressions and practice them in many different keys. An example of that is what I just showed you. I was playing the Spanish progression in A minor and then I transpose it to E minor. Do that to a few different keys and that way you're not only learning intellectually, but you're hearing the changes. And over time you'll just start remembering it once you've done it enough times. I have a lesson on the seven most common chord patterns that you should learn and I'll link to that also. Hey, was that cool or what? I wish I had a chart like this when I first started out, though I'm glad I had the practice also. Today is day 21 of my 30 days of guitar coaching series. Thank you for joining me, and I hope you'll follow me for the rest of the days until I reach 30. Hey, I have a quick favor to ask. I've got nine days left, and I would love to hear your suggestions on videos you think I should make. Leave me a comment below and Tell me your suggestions. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow for day 22. Bye for now.